All right. Welcome to another episode of the Canyon Studios podcast. I am one of your hosts, Gianni, and I'm excited to talk to our guest this week. She's going to bring so much valuable information. Um, I don't even know how to introduce her because she is so incredible at what she does. Um, We just took an assessment um, and she basically read me my entire life in like 15 minutes. So <laughs> I can't wait for y'all to hear everything that she has to talk about today. So stay tuned um, for this week's episode of the Canon Studios podcast. So listen, you may need to put your seatbelts on. You may need to grab a pen and paper um, or you may just need to listen in reference back to this podcast for the rest of your life. Because when you talk about someone that is intentional and puts so much intention behind everything it is that they do, but not only does she put intention behind her life, she helps other people live intentionally. I know I just said intention a lot of times, but that's how crucial this is, right? I have the one and only Elizabeth Bees from The Intentionals here with me to speak about, oh man, so many different things. And I'm just excited you're here. <laughs> I'm excited to be here too. <laughs> yes. So I met you. I've met you. We've met before. We've like passed before, but mm-hmm. we never really had the opportunity to talk, but we really started talking at the film summit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, she has to be on the podcast, like you poured so much into me in just like that 30 minutes that we got to speak. And so I said, uh, a lot of people need this. So, um, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's just start out for maybe those that aren't familiar with who you are and what it is that you do. Just tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay. My name is Elizabeth Peace and I have two Organizations. One's a nonprofit called Intentional Legacy, and then I have The Intentionals, which is an LLC. And what would people want to know about me? <laughs> <laughs> and really, my passion has been my entire life about making choices that create specific and intentional outcomes in myself first and foremost from a very early age. And then also as I was kind of growing up sports, different things, business, and it just became this echo Mm -hmm. in me that intentionality is what makes the difference in my life, but also everybody's life around me. And so I literally started, became a coach, like, you know, the cool name of being a coach, um, a long time ago and how I learned what a business coach was like a coach in a professional setting was my manager came to me and said, Hey, I want you to go take this coaching certification. And my amazingly brilliant response was we've won the softball tournament for the last five years. (laughs) So why, why, why do you want me to go be a coach? And, um, with some choice words, he explained that he wasn't talking about softball. So, um, big paradigm shift for me. And I went and I learned what being, um, a coach was, and that's kind of started the process. And that was, um, a few decades ago. Yeah. Well, you're only 25. So you started really young. Mm -hmm. Gonna go with that since I have two daughters that are twenty nine and twenty eight. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but okay. <laughs> well, yes, that is awesome. So, really, you had somebody that put. Well, they saw something in you that you didn't see in yourself, which is what I think you do for others. Mm-hmm. So, um, just look how that whole cycle started. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> Your old coach. Okay. Well, perfect. Um, so now here's the fun part. Let's get to know you a little bit. Maybe some things that the average person may not know about Elizabeth. If you could have a conversation with any historical figure, who would it be? I know that most people probably say like God or Yeshua or Jesus, but yeah. that's who I would love to just have a conversation Yeah, and find out. I just would. That yeah. would be probably the one. Do you have, like, what would be one question you would ask them? With all of the power that he had, Mm -hmm. why did he not force people to do the right thing? Mm. That's a good question. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Second, my second question would be, right, I feel like, Jesus had a lot of conversations over breaking bread. So what restaurant would y'all go to? (laughs) Uh, My 
my 16 year old son asked me, mom, if you could eat at any restaurant for the rest of your life for free, what restaurant would that be? Yeah. My answer is Panera because okay. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I would okay. be completely happy. Great coffee, great everything. And give me soup and breaking bread. Yeah. I'm there good with you that. Go. Let's okay. have this conversation. So I don't know. Do they serve fish though? Cause I seem to like fish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I have to rethink um, that for him. I'll just let him make dinner right there. Yeah. Yeah. He can do he, it. He can. <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> I'm like, do they serve fish? I don't know. I don't know either. They serve they definitely serve bread though. Okay, that's I like that answer. Um, what movie or TV show could you watch over and over? This might seem like a complete pendulum shift, but I love my cousin Vinny. Who is it? Oh, my, my cousin, cousin. Okay. Just the quotes from yeah. that. And the first time I ever watched it was when I was moving from New England okay. to Georgia. It's a and classic. the stereotypical, like extreme stereotypical, northern New York to Alabama. Like, <laughs> it. obviously, they magnified the stereotypes, you know? <laughs> But just where that all ended, it was just, it's, it's great. I actually sat down with my kids a few Mm -hmm. weeks ago and we all watched it together. Yeah. And every one of them made fun of me because I'm not a movie or TV person at all. Okay. And um, they're like, how did you watch something four times in a day? Because that was the (laughs) truth. And as soon as we finished it, my son goes, I could watch that again. So. I need to watch it. You have never watched it? It always shows up. Like, it's something to watch. And I'm like, what is my cousin Vinny? No, it's really good. You're going to be have to be okay with some I mean, words. That's and, okay. You know, it's okay. My it was, cousin it's Vinny. My cousin Vinny, please. And Marissa Tomei. Okay. Just, she's amazing. Next movie night for me and Kyle. Canyon, Canyon. We'll wait till Canyon goes to sleep. Yes. That okay. <laughs> There's a reason my 16-year-old just saw it for the first okay. time. <laughs> and it's not okay. the content. It's just the... Yeah. Vocabulary. That's okay. all. Okay. Got it. Yeah, because he will definitely repeat it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my goodness>. yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> so if you could have any superpower, what would it be and how would you use it? I would love to know the truth about situations and people. And then I would love to help in that. Whatever the truth, the truth is. So if someone didn't know the truth about themselves, I'd love to share that with them. If someone was hurting, Mm -hmm. I'd love to know that to help them. Hmm. Just the truth. Because there's so many stories that come out years later that if someone knew the truth, there could have been help and assistance in that. That reminds me of a show I watched called The Act. Um, It was on Hulu and is about a girl. I don't even remember her name, but basically her mom made her think she was sick for her entire life. Um, And then ultimately she met a guy online and they killed the mom. And um, then the girl found out that there was nothing wrong with her. Her mom was basically telling her that so that she can get money and all of this stuff. And so the girl actually like, discovered who she was while she was in prison. She's about to get out in a little bit, but oh, this, is a true story. this is a true story. I can't remember the little girls. It's like on the tip of my tongue, but it's called the act. It's a true story. Um, mm. And so what you said, it's like, if people knew the truth, the mom would probably still be alive in prison, but still alive. And the girl probably would be out here living life and be free to who she was like to the truth of who she is. And I think a lot of people hear that. I mean, just think of the whole bullying issue. You're this, you're this, you're this, you're this. And even in the world that I work in with assessments, one of the reasons the assessments I've either created or use, I use them that don't have labels Mm. because I hate labels Yeah, because you're this. No, you're not. You're unique. There's no one on this planet like you. Yeah, And I just, that would be the superpower is to tell them, this is the truth. Yeah. Like to look at you and go, you are an ideas person. Fly with it. Yeah. Let the ideas come. Yeah. And then find someone who can support you in the other areas that right. aren't who you are. Yeah. That's awesome. I saw, and once again, it's not, I'm not a big TV person, but there was a, what's the music one? 
America's Got Talent, something like that. Yeah, All right. that's one. Well, a guy went and auditioned, and he was horrendous. <laughs> <clears throat> now, mind you, I've been paid not to sing happy birthday to people. <laughs> so I can relate to this young man. But he's like, my mom says I'm the best singer in the world. Mm. And yet he went up there and humiliated himself. Yeah. Why? Because his mom told him he's the best singer in the world. Baby, you sound so good. <laughs> and he ran with But why couldn't it. she see the other parts that were good and bring <laughs> right. those to bear? Right. That's true. Maybe you're a good guitar player. <laughs> there, You could be a co- bunch of great things. Yeah. And you could be a songwriter. You could, you know, you could write the mm-hmm. lyrics and put, let someone add the music if yeah. that's not your gifting. And so just, I wish people would be way more truthful. Yeah. Because truth is a gift, but it's sometimes really, really hard to deliver. Mm. Whew. Well, this is just the introduction. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> I told y'all, y'all were in for a treat. Um, well, let's get into it to okay. learn more about you. So let's talk about um, the journey of starting. It's the Intentionals, and then you have the Intentional Legacy. Intentional Legacy right. is a nonprofit. Um. What was kind of the inspiration behind those two? Well, I grew up in corporate America. I loved, I've always worked for large companies and mm-hmm. um, have loved it. Mm-hmm. I, I may or may not have a workaholic gene um, because I love what I do. Yeah. And so that has been a gift for me. And then just with some life things, um, I actually laid myself off, which Ooh. my boss made was very frustrated because I also wrote my own severance package. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> and um, so that worked out well. And right. I actually started consulting, did all my consulting, was traveling a lot. At the time, I was trying to homeschool my son at the same yeah. time. And I woke up one Wednesday, no, one Monday morning and went to bed Wednesday night. Um. Because I was trying to do consulting and I was trying to mm. homeschool my son and trying to manage at, my, at the time my teenage daughters, like just so much. And I kind of got to the end of that and realized, um, yeah, th- this is probably not working out really well for me. Yeah. And so I was just like, all right, stop. I just have to stop. And then I was on a walk with my 16, if she was 16 at the time, niece, and she said, Auntie, if you want to influence your kids, isn't it? Would you rather be taking all these big jobs and continuing on this process? Or do you want to be home where you Mm. have more flexibility? And it's like, you just look at the 16 year old, like (laughs) one, (laughs) shut up. (laughs) And second, I wasn't thinking that at 16. (laughs) I don't know where you came from, but yay. And so, um, it just was this kind of moment of, all right, what are my values? Yeah. Am I going to step back and create those and or let other people create those for me? Am I going to make my decisions on mm. the, my values or am I going to make decisions on things that don't matter? Right. And so kind of pulled back and started the intentional legacy because I love to give, mm-hmm. but when you give to people, a lot of times it gets funky. Mm-hmm. Either they expect more or that it becomes uncomfortable. And so I wanted to start giving anonymously. So my Teenager girls love doing this thing called Ding Dong Ditch. Do you mm-hmm. know what that is? Yeah. And ding I'm dong. like, we, we're not going to do that. We can yeah. do Ding Dong Bless. And yeah. So we make brownies or leave flowers or something like that. You get the same adrenaline rush, but they're not angry with you because <laughs> they all know it's you anyway. <laughs> so stop it. And so just that giving thing, love doing that. And so the first thing we ever did is my oldest daughter was in college at the time and she worked for a program for after school at a high school that's completely underprivileged, just Mm. like heartbreaking what these kids are going through. Mm -hmm. And that's really rude. My (laughs) phone is ringing (laughs) y'all. That's okay. Yeah. This is what happens when you don't check your phone. And it's spam. Another lovely thing. So sorry, everybody. That's okay. But she was working there and they were having finals coming up. And she's like, is there anything you can do? And so I'm like, you know what? This would be a great first project. So a good friend of mine, her name is Jill Deems, amazing person, very, very successful. We Mm -hmm. put all these boxes to our bags together with all healthy foods for Mm -hmm. finals, like a water bottle, almonds, like all this really good stuff. And then she wrote 
handwritten notes to oh, wow. every student encouraging them. I mean, it was unbelievable. Wow. And so our first year we had four hundred and dollar project that we went and did yeah. like nothing big. Yeah. Um, and then over the years we've been able to pay for a child who had six heart surgeries in the first 60 days of her life. Oh my gosh. Um, we've paid for private adoptions. We've done all kinds of really cool, but as much as possible anonymous. Yeah. And so then I'm like, you know what I do as a coach and a career coach, why don't I give that to people? You know, yeah. people who are out of work, people who, life just changed and yeah. they need to go back to work or whatever it is. And so I started doing my coaching through intentional legacy. So that's kind of where that whole thing and incredibly blessed what we've been able to do. I, the stories are mind numbing that yeah. I can't even tell about them. Cause I'll just start weeping because <laughs> God is very, very good. Yeah. And um, the growth in that has been amazing. So then Life change happens again, yeah. and I was going to shut down Intentional Legacy because I didn't like doing the detail work, like mm. the, can I do tax stuff? And yeah, yes, <laughs> can I do it well? <laughs> yes. Do I like to do it? No. So do I do it? No. <laughs> so my accountant for all those years, she was like, um, Elizabeth, come on. It, this isn't hard. We do not need to take you know, 12 days before your taxes are due and you get your (laughs) stuff together. (laughs) Like, okay. Like I wouldn't even track mileage. I I just, I didn't do anything that would have been helpful, but didn't do it. And so I was going to shut it down and she's like, absolutely not. Mm. I'm like, you're the one. (laughs) What's wrong with you people? Um, You accountants like like this stuff, Um, which I love them so dearly and appreciate them so much. And she's like, no, you're doing too many things that are too good. You can't stop. And I'm like, Mm. yeah, I'm not doing it. And I was literally praying about doing it. And I just really felt like I wasn't supposed to shut it down. And my middle daughter was in Haiti serving Mm -hmm. and we just, both of us just in prayer knew she was coming home. Yeah, I'm like, you want to come work with your mom? Right. Cause that sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a whole backstory to that, but she loves details. She loves administrative work. She okay. loves all of that. And so she came back and then the next year, my other daughter joined me. And so it's just been really fun. Yeah. So because of that, we had to start paying them because, you know, they like to eat and live in yeah. doors, you know, little things like yeah. that. <laughs> um, and so we started um, to move over to becoming the LLC where we started offering um, things for other people like a billable. So it became a business. Yeah. So we still have the nonprofit intentional legacy for the donation side. And then we took all of the business stuff that we were doing and put it into the LLC, which we started in December. So okay. that was really cool. The yeah. intentions. And in the intentions, our passion is to help organizations and people do whatever they're designed to do. So I was designed to run a nonprofit. I was not designed to do the back end. Yeah. It's just not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's okay that it's not my thing. And yeah. I, would, I would stress myself out and I bribe myself. That was great. Yeah. Oh, if you do this, you can go do this. <laughs> what is, oh. I've heard people use that tactic. It's not very effective for it's me. It's not at all effective yeah. for anyone. You just postpone it and go do what you want yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Right. So. That kind of is the back end backstory of it. And then the intentionals per se. So we have three segments that kind of tie everything together. So Jordan um, is really the point person for our our intentional entrepreneurs. And that's where we help entrepreneurs with their back office stuff. So it's a virtual administrative assistant. They're not ready to hire someone yet full time. Some people need 30 minutes a week. Mm -hmm. Some people are like every hour you can give me, I will take. And the whole objective is to support them for as long as they need to. But also if they're planning on hiring some full time, someone full time is documenting every process so that when that new person comes in, it's not Mm. like, let's start over. Yeah. So it just is a way to help them do what they're designed to do. And then Katie Joy is over our um, intentional careers with the students. She loves students. Okay. (laughs) She's very peopley. Okay. Um, and, um, so she sits with students 
and goes through the assessments that we use and just talks to them about ways to look at what next steps are. College is not always the answer. Trade school may not be the answer. It may be go intern for a while. Go yeah. try a bunch of different things first, depending on what the life situations are. And she loves that, and which is funny because she wouldn't let me tell her <laughs> what she should major in. And we joke about it is I had her major and her minor yeah. put it in an envelope, sealed it. Yeah. And then after five major changes in college, <laughs> she decided on what it should be. And I'm like, here you go. <laughs> um, so it's funny that now she's the one who's doing yeah. that. And she is a great example. She wanted to be a nurse because she's really caring and mm-hmm. loving to people. Okay, great. Yeah. She hates stress. She hates process. She hates structure. And I'm like, honey, you will love every one of your patients to death. Yeah. Nursing is not the answer. Yeah. And so just knowing that, it doesn't make it wrong. It's right. just knowing the truth about yourself. Right. And then my passion is the last one, and it's intentional organizations. And that is um, putting the right people in the right place for the right time mm. to achieve the business results. Because there's no business that exists without a human. Yeah. And yet it's often a portion of business that's not prioritized. Right. And retention and mm-hmm. just paying mm, paying <laughs> attention to the human at the Yeah. Yes. And you you know, like yeah. what is the cool stuff that makes them unique? Yeah. What is the thing that sets them apart from everybody else? We might have a lot of shared characteristics and things we enjoy. Mm-hmm. What's that one off? Yeah. How do we capitalize on that in a sense that fills them up yeah. and moves the business forward? Yep, that's true. Tapping into what do they enjoy? Yes. Yeah. Then you have buy-in from them and they'll love coming to work every they day. They will outwork any yeah. expectation if you care about who they are as a human first. Yeah. Man. So that was a Oof. lot. And no, I think that that's part good. of our problem is we have so much, but it all ties back to that yeah. same thing is helping other people do what they were designed to do. That's the core of it. Yes. And there's just different levels at which you offer that, but they're all equally important. Correct. So, okay. Well, how would you say um, you help individuals live intentionally? It's in your name, (laughs) right? It's in the name. (laughs) I think understanding what I believe intentional means, and when I say that, I love what words mean. Right. Like what they actually mean. Mm -hmm. And intentional means on purpose. Mm. By design. So Mm -hmm. if you take intense, there's an intensity, there's a laser focus there. Have you ever gone through a day where you're just like, Mm -hmm. and you get to the end of the day and you're like, I didn't get anything Mm -hmm. done. How does that make you feel? Like I haven't done anything. Okay. So you do that for a week and then you do that for a month. Yeah. And then you do that for years. You'll start losing the fact that you're valuable. Yeah. And <sighs> that's a really good point. But does it depend on the person? Because some people, like for me, I have to have a checklist for everything. Because if I don't feel like I've checked off everything or checked off those tasks, I look at the end of the day and I may have done 50 things, but I don't feel like I've done anything. But then like my mom, right? So both of my parents are retired. I don't know if she... She has kind of like a loose schedule, Mm -hmm. but it's like, okay, I wake up, I have my coffee, I get ready for the day, and then I'm just creating until Mm -hmm. I get tired. That wouldn't work for me because I wouldn't be able to check off. I don't know. So do you think it's different based on, because we did the assessment in that my mom is a thing. You think she's a thing because she's she's in with her hands. Does does the example you use depend on the person? I think it always will depend on the person. Okay. As far as the intensity of it. Okay. You can get 50 things done and not be satisfied. Some people will be fine if I get one thing checked off. Okay. Because the one thing might be this big. So you've heard the expression, eat an elephant one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because some people have to do it in tiny, tiny steps. And some people want to attack the big elephant. Yeah. There's an, also this thing that supports the mindset of the checklist and knowing that you're accomplishing things. 
is that your body chemically creates endorphins yeah. when you have a check mark. Yeah. So if your body has that, wouldn't it be in everybody's body? I just think the intensity of it is a little bit different. Whew. Why do you complete tasks? And I'm assuming. Yeah. Why do you complete a task? Then you go back and you write it down on the list so you can check it off. I think for me at the end of the day, especially now that I'm basically a full-time entrepreneur. So proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say that. So yeah, you brought it up. Can I just make Thank a huge you. announcement? Gianni is a full-time entrepreneur. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Um, I think for me, I have to do that because at the end of the day, I won't feel productive if, because I may have done a lot, but if I don't have a record of it for me, then it's just out there. And I don't know why I'm wired like that, <laughs> but I am even with, and Cannon's wired a little bit like that. Like I made an after school checklist for him and it helps him. He takes his dry erase mark and he's like, okay, mommy, I still got these two things left to do. So I don't know if it's like, me being obsessed with like my productivity or, but it really does. Like when I look back on my day and let's just say there's 10 things and I've done nine, I'm like, I had a pretty good day. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I don't have a list and I've just gone through the, the day and I may have done those nine things, I'm like, man, what did I do today? Right. Cause you forget that. Yeah. So that for you is a way to remember. Yeah. I think some people can remember things. Yeah. I, I don't know who, they are. <laughs> so many moons ago, before you were probably even born, there was a company called Franklin Quest that became Franklin Covey. Yes. And so I used to be an instructor for Franklin Covey. Okay. And my family and friends called my planner the book. Yeah. Well, just ask her for what's in the book. I'm yeah. like, yo, what is your deal? But all of my information was in the book, but everyone relied on me. Yeah. They, everybody wants the information. We want to know what we did. We want the details yeah. that we need to remember. Why did we have, I don't know if you remember these Rolodexes and we yeah. write the notes on it. Why do you have a notes section in contacts and outlook? Right. It can't be just one person. They wouldn't mm -mm. create all of these things that everybody wants. Right. You, you know, if you think about it, it's not just you, but there's many people who just don't implement it because people have a hard time ideas creating the system. Someone else steps in for data, they can maintain the system. Yeah, that's me. So if you know who, like if you can create the system, I have a dear, amazing human being in my life named Kelly Vermer, um, that I went and set up their kitchen when they moved. Mm -hmm. um, I've organized their linen closet. Mm -hmm. I've done, Because if she has a system, she can run with it. Mm -hmm. But to start a system is not like the gift that she, that's not her thing. Right. But she's so talented. She's so intelligent, but she knows, yeah, that's not me. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. You handle that. Right. So your check marks are good. The yeah. fact that Canon is already doing <laughs> them, that is amazing. And it gives him purpose. Yeah. Tell me one person that you know who wants to go through the end of the day and go, oh yeah, I did nothing. Right. Nobody. There's no one. Unless it's intentionally to do nothing. And that means it's rest. Yes. And that's, that is something. Yeah. Okay. So rest is good. Yeah. But there's no one who wakes up and says, oh, I just want to do nothing for the rest of my life. Oh, no. But if you do nothing this day and you do nothing this day and you do nothing, it just keeps building. Yeah. So go back to intentionality. Many of us live very unintentionally. Mm -hmm. So and I actually have had this conversation with some high school students recently. No one takes their first drink going, I can't wait to be an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No one. Yeah. Okay. No one does something minor thinking, I want this to be the definition of who I am as a person. Yeah. That story you told me about of the TV show. Yeah. That mom probably mm -hmm. didn't start the process saying, I want to control this person's life and use them, my daughter's life, for my benefit. Right. But one thing after another of being unintentional mm -hmm. turned into intentionality in a negative way. Yeah. Yeah, so intention can be used for good and bad. 100%. Mm. Okay. We're going a little bit deep here. 
Um, so based on that, in your opinion, in your opinion, what are, um, some common obstacles that prevent people from living intentionally? I think the number one thing is they don't know what they don't know about themselves. Mm -hmm. And then if you, if I know myself, Mm -hmm. I'm an ideas person too. So I didn't tell you that at first. Um, okay. So if I'm going to go in and take a job or a project now as an entrepreneur, as a consultant, I'm not going to go in and focus on things because that's not a motivator for me. Right. So I know myself. So kind of put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then mm-hmm. you can serve others. Know you mm-hmm. and then choose to help other people be intentional. So think about this. If I'm working with students or my daughter that I just told you about the story. Mm -hmm. If I had encouraged her to intentionally encourage her to go into nursing Mm -hmm. instead of having a really honest conversation that hurt her feelings. Yeah. I, the, the difference would have been, she would have been in a a career that completely stressed her out and impacted other people potentially in a really bad way. Yeah. So I think for me, that's the number one is just knowing yourself and being willing to speak the truth to others. Those two together are, and they're not easy speaking the truth. Usually you kind of have like that nauseous feeling before you go in and say something you're like, yeah. So when you said, right, cause I'm leaving to go out of town tomorrow and I'm gonna be on a plane and you just said something that, you hear all the time when you're on the plane, put your mask on first and then you worry. But when I hear people say that, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, I'm like, depending on who's with me, if I'm with Cannon, I'm putting his mask on first and I'll worry about, now I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, but I'm like, I care more about his life and if he's going to be okay by me putting his mask on. <laughs> It's mask okay, on and first. I, like I understand that because I've right. thought through that process myself. I'm like, of course I'm going to do that for them. Right. What are you going to do when he takes it off because he doesn't understand? See, I haven't thought that. What, <laughs> thought you, that what are you going to do when he's like crying because you're not responding? Yeah. Who's going to take care of him? Yeah. That's true. And this is a just a thing in my life that just an echo is I would rather be the one, the one hurt than guilty. Okay. So I would rather my children not have to suffer through things because I took care of myself to take care of them. Mm. So it's not selfish as long as the intent of the heart is not to hurt. The intent of the heart needs to be to elevate them and to give them the best possible outcome. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Put the oxygen mask on your <laughs> shoulder. No. And, and then put and it on. You're going, you're going by your, but I mean, yeah. how, how hard is this to do this? I don't know. But if you don't have this on, how do you even know you put it on him right? That's true. You're just spewing something that you don't even know. Yeah. If you don't take the time to know here and take care of here first. And I'm not talking about self-absorption. Yeah. I'm not talking about... Situations where I see parents putting themselves, well, I got to take care of myself. Yeah. No, <laughs> that child needs you yeah. like in this moment. Yeah. Like, there's weighing that. Yeah. That puts things in perspective. Okay. I was about to cry for a second. Please um, don't. Let's, let's move to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> she loves conflict. She loves tension. <laughs> Oh, wait, I think she put that in the I hate category. <laughs> yes, I hate conflict. I hate having hard conversations, except for with Kyle. And I think it's- Kyle, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know. He's like, I guess he's like my safe space. Like it's, yeah. if we have a tough conversation because of who he is, I know that it's like, he's going to tell me like, this is the truth. And I'm going to tell you this, even if it hurts your feelings, because I know it's going to make you better. So- but anybody else, I'm like, Mm-mm, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to. And that's do. just trusting. But I also think that's wise. Yeah. I think keeping your circles, I tell people a lot that when Christ was on earth, he had an inner circle of three. Yeah. What makes me think I'm going nine wide down any path? Yeah. The, the, he had those other nine 
like, but the three were the ones who hung out with him on the big moments. Yeah. So maybe keep that. And now that you say that, I'm like, I do have exactly three people. (laughs) And it's perfectly okay. I think we've twisted what friends is and what advisor and mentor means is because, you know, I have 8,000 friends on Facebook. Um, Actually, nope. You know? Yeah. I think it's okay to have. You can have acquaintances. Friend. Yeah. Or like I view it as a circle, right? Out here are all the people that know you, know of you, whatever. And then you get a little bit closer. It's like, oh, I would go to dinner with you mm-hmm. in a social setting. And then you get a little bit closer. And the closer they get to the middle, that's the more access they have to you. And, and me being able to be vulnerable Correct. and really being intention, intentional with my conversations with them. So, Correct. Um, so where does the muffin man live? In those circles. <laughs> the Muffin Man. That's funny. That's the name of our first episode. I know. That's why I love it. The Muffin it. Man, right? That's knowing, you know, who who is right next to you, right? And so that just depends on who is right next to me. Um, if Kyle is right next to me, he's right there in the middle. Um, so he's one of my three. Um, really, I have four, I would say. But anywho, we could talk about Kyle all day. Hey, Kyle, I know you're not on here, but. Uh, we're giving you a special shout out. Oh, can I make another shout out to yeah. him? Yeah. I've taken his fashion style for <laughs> Casey Sullivan. Um, I also am a comfort goblin. And yes. And Kyle, we're good. Yes. He is definitely, he, when I saw him this morning, he had on shorts and a hoodie. I'm like, so you switched it up a little bit. You wore shorts <laughs> instead of sweatpants. He's like, yeah, it's because it's humid outside. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> so yes absolutely okay what how would you define intentionality on purpose by design with intensity i yes that's it that's how i would define it Inten- okay i like it and okay so you're a business owner Right. You work with other business owners, organizations um, with what it is that you do specifically. What are some of the biggest challenges you faced while building and growing and maybe helping other businesses as well? Um, for me personally, not knowing what I didn't know. I, I, I learned a lot of, oh, <laughs> you're supposed to do that. <laughs> um, how interesting. How much is it going to cost me to bring my registration up today? <laughs> I thought you do it once and you're done. Um, remember my accountant being annoyed with me? There were a lot of things. Yeah. No, Elizabeth, you're supposed to pay quarterly taxes. Quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> Not annually. Oh. Yeah. So there's just things like things I just didn't know. That would yeah. be one. The other thing, and you and I actually have both been part of that is yeah. the entrepreneur yeah. network is sometimes it's really lonely. And yeah. I have been so amazingly blessed over my career that I've had great teams I've worked mm-hmm. with and I still have friendships mm-hmm. from in my twenties from mm-hmm. where I've worked and you don't have that as an entrepreneur. And sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, you need a sounding board mm-hmm. and um, when you become your own sounding board, it's like watching a ping pong match. <laughs> And you don't know which one is you and which one is like question. Right. You just after a while, like what? And just little things, um, just like the team camaraderie. Like yeah. you, you miss that. Yeah. At least I did, and maybe right. other people. And I'm not a huge peopley person, right? But I miss people challenging me. Mm-hmm. I miss people going, "Are you insane? <laughs> Justify yourself." <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah. Know, like just, so I, I miss that part right. as an entrepreneur and, um, working with other businesses, getting to the place where you can define what you do so well that other people get it. I'm not great at that. I am 17 years into being on my own. as like away from a W2 type job mm-hmm. and I'm still not great at defining what I do. Because I'm so passionate about it, it's yeah. hard to explain it to someone else. So a lot of times I like to hear their story first mm-hmm. and then say, hey, have you ever thought about this, this, and this? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I do. Yeah. But that's a hard thing to communicate right. to people. And I find that with a lot of us. A lot of us entrepreneurs, we're kind of, 
Yeah. Most of us are a little bit, we have a little bit of a flighty. Yeah. Um, oh, that'd be a good idea. That'd yeah. be a good idea. And which is great. Yeah. And it's what makes us unique. And yeah. it's what makes this community unique, unique that I, I love that. And I think with small businesses, if people really understood how much of our national income, mm-hmm. or, what is it? Gross national profit. Um, is from small businesses. I would love to see a much bigger influence on that. Yeah. The other part I would love to see, especially for someone like me, is the part of the business that I work on is with corporations. Yeah. They're going to be bigger. They're going to invest in their people. They'll do team building, facilitating. How do you get in that door? Right. And that's a, I don't have the answer all the time. Yeah. Um, Mostly for me, I just pray and see what happens. Um, <laughs> I'm probably not the best human being to tell you about a structure of how to do things. Right. Because I didn't even have a website until two years, three years ago when Jordan joined me and told me I probably should. Wow. Um, social media. So yours is just straight up. I pray and see what happens. And it's God sends you the right people. In the most random places. Yeah. It's really kind of comical. I had a client for probably four years um, and somebody said, well, how did you meet him? And I'm like, I actually have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) And he said, it was at a graduation ceremony and we sat next to each other. I'm like, did I talk to you first? (laughs) Because yes, you did about how you are this amazing coach. I'm like, I said that. And he goes, no, but you didn't stop talking. Oh, so that's how, like, I can't, yeah. you are a people person. Um, I like people. I'm not really good at surface. Yeah. Like I struggle with conversations that don't add a value. Right. To the person. I see. Yeah, and I can I can attest to that because we talked for a little bit, and I I think I'm kind of like that too, mm-hmm. which is why I struggle with networking sometimes because you've asked me about my son for 30 minutes. Like I'll talk to you about Canon all day, but like where are we going with this conversation? Correct. How can Correct. I help you? Right. Um, because I want to leave you with value, and I want to leave you with a feeling that. I've helped, we may never speak again, but you're going to remember how I made you feel based on our conversation and me and you talking about Canon for 30 minutes. That's fine. But how how can I help you specifically? Or even generic stuff. Yeah. Like not even Canon. Just like the what, I don't care. The weather is the weather. Did you watch the game last night? Actually, no. What was on? And what game was it? (laughs) Well, I actually maybe had an idolatry to sports, so we won't go there. (laughs) I don't know. I had to take a chill pill on that after the Red Sox won the World Series, but um, we waited 81 years. It's okay. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm, I'm very serious about it. But I think yeah. one thing is just teaching people um, to leave people better than you found them. Yeah. And that happens with the conversation. Do you find yourself sometimes giving people too much information? Um, I'm pretty guarded about some okay. stuff. Um, most people would not have any idea what my story is and that's okay yeah um i probably ask questions that some people would find nosy and offensive but i care more about like what i've been blessed with mm-hmm. as gifting experience whatever can i use that to help you and yeah. if not you could probably talk to somebody else who can help like just move you one tiny step forward on your yeah. journey and so nosy and offensive that kind of explains my mom a little bit. Um, I'm sorry. Who was the one putting all those like nosy stuff? I know in the I am. Category? But my mom, you you might be like this too. My mom will walk in anywhere. Prime example: we were in Hobby Lobby. It was me, my niece, and my sister. I had gone to a completely different aisle because my mom will make friends with a piece of grass <laughs> and talk to them. <laughs> yeah, and so we were in there and. My niece says she came back around the corner and next thing she knows, my mom was talking to this lady and now this lady's like crying on her shoulder and I'm like, how did y'all even get to that point in 15 minutes? And that's my mom. And it's like, how do you do that? And she was like, I just talk to people. And I'm like, I talk to people too, but they don't start crying. Um, Yes. 
Jordan can tell you some stories that have happened on the Goldfish Isle of Walmart. <laughs> um, yes, I I yeah. do have unique conversations, and I I don't always know how they get there, but they get there really quick. And yeah. I don't know. It's like y'all are angels or something. God sends y'all to those specific people at that specific time because they didn't have anyone else to talk to. There is no doubt in my mind that it is very specific and very guided because there are times when there is just do this. I'm like, that makes no sense. And it's a little odd. (laughs) Okay, let's see what happens. (laughs) And so one of the things with intentional legacy, and I told you about anonymous giving, I used to um, go to grocery stores. Mm Mm-hmm. And I had to deal with some cashiers that I would give them my card and yeah. I would tell them whose groceries they were going to pay for. Yeah. They weren't allowed to tell who it came from, yeah. but they were covered. But there was one day I was in a Kroger and this woman was dressed beautifully, like mm-hmm. just pristine, everything yeah. about her. And I just felt like that's who I was supposed to yeah. um, pay for. And I'm like, God, no, she doesn't need it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So finally I just went to the did my little sign from the bread aisle to the cashier. And she's like, (laughs) yes. And she paid for the lady and the lady just lost it. And she said, I just brought my husband home from his first chemo treatment. And I hear her and I just walk the other way. (laughs) And the cashier, when I go up and, you know, sign, she says to me, she goes, I I don't know if I can keep doing this. (laughs) Why? What? Why yeah. is that the person? Because God knew what they needed in that yeah. moment. I will never know superpower. I'd love to know the truth. I won't. Yeah. So I just have to trust that God's going to guide me to whoever needs yeah. that in that moment. And I can, t- that's what I'm saying. Story after story of remarkable impact. So you were doing, you were paying for people's groceries before it was the trending thing to do on TikTok. I, yes. I don't have TikTok, so okay. I didn't know it was trending. It's a trend, that, and I get it, but they the problem I have is they record it. And I'm like, if your heart is really in helping people, you don't have to record every interaction. That's why it's anonymous. That's yeah. why I love anonymous. So I don't know, I do you, were you guys here when there was a 400 toll? And yes, down? Okay. by Linux. So I used to always take that, and mm-hmm. I my whole objective was to find a car that my little Jeep could outrun. <laughs> And I would get in front of them, pay their toll, and just mm-hmm. take off. Because mm-hmm. the whole point was I didn't want him to say thank you. Yeah. And my nephew, who's now in his 30s, he'd be like, Auntie, <laughs> what are you doing? Slow down. <laughs> they went away to us. And I'm like, that's not the point. Yeah. The point is to go do that. And, yeah. And I also didn't know that was a cool thing. Yeah. Like, I'm just, this same nephew actually wanted to nominate me for what not to wear. So. Oh, wow. Because I just am not. <laughs> Yes. His brother told me I had known nothing about pop culture. And I'm like, what is pop culture? Yeah. And so there you go. This is years ago. Okay. So. Well, since you're not on TikTok, on TikTok, it's a trend for people to pay for certain things or help homeless people or whatever. And they record it. And, and then that's all about them. I don't agree with that. I can see if maybe you're using that to, I don't even know, to increase visibility, to try to get more people with your cause. But we shouldn't focus on you giving. We should focus on you just listening to their story. Cause a lot of people that are going through something just want you to listen. They don't even want your money. Correct. The money helps, but and they, sometimes and, it doesn't help. Yeah. It depends on what the situation exactly. is. Exactly. Sometimes they just want to feel seen. Correct. That's, I think that's the main thing. That's is, my passion about what we get to do is like, see you. Yeah. Not see me. Yeah. See you. Well, and the Bible's so clear. Don't let the left hand know what the right hand's yeah. doing. Yeah. Okay. It's not giving. Otherwise, yeah. it's really you're just using them. Right. So we can mm. talk, have a whole TED talk about my feelings on that. But I think um, I'd be right yeah. there with you. I'll be your cheerleader in the background. Okay. <laughs> Gianni. Okay. Gianni. Spoken by a former hockey player. I shouldn't be a cheerleader. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Here's a question that I think is different. Do you think living intentionally is just a fancy way of saying being organized? That would exclude two of the three intentionals um, in our family. So no. <laughs> um, no. Organized is is structure. 
There's, mm-hmm. there's something to that and there's structure for purpose. So yes, there's an intentionality behind that, but you can be intentional and so creative that you're not organized mm. per se. You know, you're just amazing in how you think, you know, people who can sing and just go off the cuff and just yeah. belt it out. Are they organized? No. Yeah. But they're very intentional. But I will tell you, everything that's truly, truly successful has a sense of organization underneath. Like there are, there's a treble clef, and yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. There's there's form. Yeah. Um. There's fun. I guess there's function, and then there's form and right. how you put that together. But no, I don't think they're the same. I happen to be one of the charter members of the National Association of Professional Organizers when it was just coming out years and years oh, ago. Wow. Cause I do think that way, but yeah, two of the three would not um, fall into that category. Okay. So I have to ask, this isn't on my list. When you are working at your desk or wherever, does your desk have to be like clean organized in order for you to work or can you have, so Kyle works in what I call like dysfunctional organization. Mm-hmm. So he has a lot of things on his desk and I can't work like that. Like I have to, this has to have a place. I have to have my candle lit. I don't know if it's like the ambiance or what. Okay. So there's a lot of aesthetic in that with the okay. candle lit and how it looks. Yeah. You. Um, my best way of working, whether it's in the creative pursuits that I do or work is I start with a clean desk. <laughs> the process can get extremely messy. Yeah. But I'm not finished until I have a clean desk again. I like that. So I can work in the chaos. It doesn't stress me out. I love taking the most chaotic situation. Like, I love act. Don't let my son ever listen to this. Okay. But my son is... <laughs> His room is an absolute mess. That's my favorite time to clean it. Me too for Canon. Because I love to see that huge difference. Like maintenance yeah. stuff. Mm-mm. Like those people, my mother, um, <laughs> clean the desk boards, baseboards every week. Mm-mm. Yep. Nope. Okay. Yeah. My people. So you can, you, you're okay with working in the chaos if it's in the middle, but you have to start and end in organization. Correct. I like to have that, that blank slate to clean my thoughts out. I also am one of those people that takes some time to get thinking. Like I need quiet to get Mm -hmm. down and get down in my hole and think. And then anyone who interrupts, I have to come back up out of my hole. Okay. Answer that. Then get back to down my hole to answer it again. And I need that buffer to just really focus and think. And so a lot of times I have maybe been found in an Eno in a random place. (laughs) During COVID, I put a tent in the backyard and called it the mom pod. (laughs) It's probably glorious. It was. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's funny. (laughs) So, Okay. Oh, this is my favorite question right here, right? Um, because I think it does, it does, it is relevant to intentionality, but hustle, hustle culture, right? Or like I'm grinding it out or just this always doing something, the, the busyness of being an entrepreneur, um, that's often promoted, especially from, you know, on social media, I always say social media because that's something that we see it on all the time. So I said, Hustle, hustle culture is often promoted in entrepreneurship. What are your thoughts on that? Well, let's go back to definition. Okay. Um, did you see Zootopia? A long time ago. Okay. So the little fox goes, that's what I call a hustle, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you look at the definition of the word hustle, mm-hmm. it means an unfair twist mm-hmm. and deception and... Um, unconsciously being deceived. Mm -hmm. So intentionality and hustle are opposite. Right. Hustle has changed like kind of what it means. And in the LinkedIn vocabulary of the word hustle, it can be very much, you know, focused, intentional, consistent, like it can mean that. But if we're going for the core words, intentionality, Mm -hmm. you know what that means. Mm -hmm. Like there's something inside of you that resonates with that. Hustle 
can a lot of times just be a whole bunch of activity and zero progress. Yeah. Zero purpose. I say yes to everyone. I go to every single networking opportunity and I'm miserable and I'm making no money. Yeah. Okay. If it's not producing a result, it's not good. And if it's just about building other people up because this many people come to my business group or whatever, you're not helping anyone. You're, right. you're hurting yourself. And I know for me, I don't go to a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very intentional of the ones, sorry. <laughs> and I just want you to know your little podcast with uh, Michael Caldwell, he used the word intentional a lot too. <laughs> and did. so I just want everyone to know it's not just because it's the name of my company and the fact it's my favorite word and has been my whole life. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, I just think we, we spend a lot of time doing stuff just because other people are doing it. Yeah. As opposed to being intentional. What is my value system? Right. How many people don't know their values? I mean, right. how many, if I went up to 10 people at a business group, what is your value? And not, what's your company tagline? Mm-hmm. What is your value? Mm-hmm. I would tell you that 9.9 of them will not know. Yeah. Well, how do you make great decisions? Right. How, how do you know what's the next right thing? They if don't. you haven't taken the time to do that, I'm actually finishing up a new assessment and it's all about values because mm-hmm. that's what I've seen is kind of that, that gap in the assessment um, field of how do you pick your values? Which ones do you create as your own? And then how do you create questions to filter choices through? Mm. So that's the intentionality. The hustle is I'm just going to do the next thing that's available. Yeah. What if it's not the right thing for you? What if your customer base, your ideal customer base isn't even there? Right. Now, if you're going to go to a networking group to meet other people in the community who you can support, that's a good thing, but you're not hustling then. You're investing. Right. You're caring for people. Right. So it's always, what's the intention? What's coming out from within? What are you looking for from it? What's your why? Yeah. That makes sense. Hustle culture. Goodness. Okay, so what do you think about the hustle culture versus intentionality? I don't know. When I, I think I've had this conversation with my mom a while ago, um, and or I don't know, it was with somebody a while ago, and we were talking about like people saying like I'm a hustler or I hustle or I'm grinding or whatever. I have never heard Oprah say that. <laughs> That's because Oprah doesn't have to her exactly in her life and the things she's accomplished. They don't. That's my thing. If I have to tell you who I am, yeah. there's going to be a problem. Like I'm intentional and in so many things and people begin to notice it. So a yeah. silly, silly example yesterday, got up, got dressed and I was meeting with someone who's from Kenya. Like, yeah. He's going to actually be, become certified as a coach for us. Oh, wow. Because I created a coaching program. But yes. <laughs> I, I looked at my outfit and I had red, white, and black on. And I'm like, oh, I need green because of the Kenyan flag. Yeah. So I went downstairs, found some washi tape and put green tape around my finger. And I yeah. went there. He, all of the things that we talked about, the thing he remembered the most is I cared about having the colors on yeah. of the Kenyan flag. Do I have to tell him I'm intentional? No. Because he's going to know. Okay, does Oprah have to tell you she no. hustles? Because you know <laughs> she has a really big bag of money. <laughs> I mean, and a big bag of influence. And yes. a big bag of making a difference. And yeah, a, like, power. It, and it, Exactly. Yeah. And so that's I, my thoughts on it is I think there are seasons, especially at the studio, right, of not even necessarily grinding it out, but you are going to have to be out there more and doing things more, but there still has to be a goal, right? It like, has to be purposeful. It does. And so, like you said, I'm not going to, there's so many networking events just within a 10 mile radius of us. Mm-hmm. I'm intentional about the ones that I go to. Um, and it's really about deepening those relationships in the community. But I know, I can almost guarantee most of the people that I work with are not at those networking events. Correct. So, so why, why does it make sense to have those? What, right. What's the purpose behind those? I don't actually know. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I, I just think that there's so many people who are 
right near you yeah. that you need to take care of? Why do I need to drive for 45 minutes? Right. Show up to something, have a lot of surface conversations and drive back. Right. If I'm going to be part of that community and invest in them and care about them and see them in different places, that's a different story. Right. But if I'm just going so I can get my name out there, I'm... Right, there's hundreds of me in the not in the sense of there's only one me, and right. we all can just thank God for that right now. <laughs> there's there's not enough room for this much crazy, um, but there's other people who do what I do. Yeah, there's other people that do what you do. Right? Wouldn't you rather do work with like your neighbor? Yeah. And the word neighbor actually means near. Yeah. So right now we're neighbors. Yeah. So why can't I just do life right. and serve you instead of going to, you know, one more business club? And go, right. Oh, I need to find another podcast for why. Right. It's like if I sold my house, I have four people in my world that are realtors. Yeah. I'm going to make three of them mad. Yeah. It just is what it is. Because <laughs> all four of them can't sell one out. <laughs> and if I go to a different business group, there's going to be three more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm limiting my stress. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, yes. That makes a lot of sense. But that, when you asked, what do I think of hustle culture? I think of the people, right, that I kind of envision as like, man, they're successful, not just financially, but just as a human being and seeing the impact and other people talking about the impact that they've had on their lives. One of those people is Oprah. And I'm like, I have never heard her say, girl, I'm grinding it out. Girl, I'm just out here hustling. Like, I have never heard her say that. So I'm like, why should I say I'm hustling because I'm not. <laughs> no, you're just doing you're doing the next right thing. Right. And to me yeah. that's much more effective. Yeah. Than you know bunch of chasing your tail. Yeah. You know? So that's my that's my thoughts on it. All right. Here's my last business question. Okay. What are three ways that a business owner um that a business owner can use to build their business with intention. So what are, I guess, what are three way, what are three tips that a business owner can take to start to build their business with intention? Right. So just mm -hmm. use us as an example. Okay. If so that's for, easy enough. Uh, it would be easy. Okay. For Canon, what are your values? Uh, when you said that, I was like, what are our values? Right. I think everything we do, we want to lead people back to the power they have in themselves. Okay. Okay, so that's a value. We right. our, our value is showing you what's inside of you. Yeah. That's a value. I would find three of those values yeah. and know them and literally make yes-no questions for them. Does blank lead this person to seeing the value within themselves? Mm. If it's a no, you have a decision made. Done. Okay. It doesn't mean, oh, well, they're really nice and, oh, they really need help. No. Does this help them lead back to seeing what's really inside of themselves? That's that will help qualify a client too. Like, oh, oh. they could be great, but oh man, you're giving like really good. Okay, okay. So and imagine that, that doing that for a student. Does yeah. this is your value? Does this help you stay intricately involved in your family's life? If family is your number one value, yeah. Well, that could make your decisions a lot easier. Yeah. For where you go to school, what work you do, whatever. So yeah. there's, it makes life, to me, simpler because it's intense. It's like a laser. Okay. Um, the next thing that I would say is look at your people mm -hmm. across the whole branch from recruiting to retention. Like, mm -hmm. They all are connected. Mm -hmm. But they have to have the same values as you. Mm. The values have to be the same. Skill sets absolutely should be different. Because you don't need multiples of you. Yeah. Um, I had a, a guy that I worked with in one of the bigger companies. And literally, he hired everybody that was in his fraternity. And I'm like. That didn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't a good idea for the business. It wasn't a good idea for friendships. It yeah. just wasn't a good idea. Yeah. So a lot of things changed in that. But just hiring people with the same value base, communicating those values in your recruiting in your hiring, in your performance review, everything. Mm -hmm. The people, 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 so important. But the values have to come first. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing is just understanding that every person that's involved with you matters. Your vendors, 
They have a lot going on in their lives. Do you know that? Do you care about paying them on time? Mm -hmm. Do you know what they need? Do you know where they're growing? Like, are you helping the people who are helping you? Mm -hmm. Your employees, your customers, like be people focused. The bottom line will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. I don't mean be people driven in the sense where you give away everything. Right. We're here to, like, everyone deserves the work, the payment for their work. Um, But... I think if we could just get back to that focus of the person at the end of that contract that you've committed to buying something from them, they're maybe trying to pay their bills. Yeah. Are are you paying attention to that? Or are you just dismissing it because you're worried about your bills? Right. You know, just understand. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs use people Mm. in a way they wouldn't want to be used. Yeah. And when I've talked to specifically to, they're in my head right now. I'm like, you know, that's abuse. Like you're expecting something good from them, but you're treating them poorly. Yeah. If, if you can't do it, it's just a conversation. They understand they've been yeah. there, but they're just, they're equally human beings right. as you are. So right. treat others the way you want to be treated. It's really, this is the thing. It's not hard. Well, yeah. no, it's not complicated. Sometimes it's hard, yeah. but it's not complicated. Yeah. Okay. I love it. And I think that's applicable to any business, regardless of what size you are. It doesn't matter. Um, Well, this has been fun. Um, Now it's your turn to ask me questions. So what questions do you have for me? Okay. So I was going to bring this up, but you already did. (laughs) Um, This is kind of like your first full week with, yeah. Or is it your second week? Uh, so last Monday at 10, 20 a.m. was my last day working a job. Okay, so this is the first full week. Yeah. We might, did we hit it? Oh, right there. Yep. Okay, so you've been yes. an entrepreneur for one solid week. One week. Ooh, how are you? <laughs> I feel like I have a lot of work to do mm-hmm. um, in the business because... Um, Right. Because of where we want to take this um, and who we want to work with, we're we're getting a lot more specific about who we want to work with and who yes, and who we don't want to work with. And at first it was like, oh, cool. cool. They have the budget. They can work with us. We'll help them, you know. But like literally as of yesterday, someone called and um, they were interested in a podcast and I had to ask them, I said, is this something you're looking to try out or something you're committed to? I said, cause we're interested in building partnerships, not just being a facility to come in and record content. And they said, Oh, well, yeah, we're interested in it for the long term." So just like small little shifts like that, but then like, what is the process for doing that? What are some other questions? So I feel like there's a lot of work to do and I'm excited about it because I like figuring it, figuring it out Mm -hmm. and then, um, testing it and seeing if it works. So I'm, I'm like truly excited. I know I'm probably like really calm because when I think about it, I'm like, man, this is like something I prayed for. Mm -hmm. And when something that you prayed for happens, it's like, is this really happening? I don't know. It's like we ask God for it and he gives it to us and then we question whether or not it's real. I don't know why we do that. Hmm. But for me, and I think it's Cannon's a mindset. never done that to you. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's a mindset thing because I think it also goes back to like, do I deserve to be where I am now? Mm-hmm. Probably not, but God is graceful, right? I haven't done all the all of the perfect things, but he's a perfect God that gives me so many chances. So mm-hmm. for me to have the opportunity to work in a business that he gave me the gifts to be able to run, that's just mind blowing. So that's how I'm feeling about my first week. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to go to a word that a lot of people use. And okay. It's about deserve. Okay. In all reality, we deserve nothing. Exactly. So just leave it there. We yeah. deserve nothing. Everything is a blessing. Everything. Every interaction, every yeah. lesson learned, every opportunity yeah. is undeserved. Yep. So what do we do with undeserved things? We are grateful for them. Yeah. So for everything. It's so. really cool. I'm really so proud yeah. of you. All I'm right. Excited. So how can we help you? Like, how can we help Canon Studios get to where you and Kyle want it to be? Man, that's a really good question because I always have a problem asking for, like, when people ask me that, I never know what to say um, 
because I feel like it's my responsibility to do it all on my own. That's a mindset thing with me, right? Um, but in That's terms of pride. what's that? That's called pride. I know it's 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 God's working on me. Uh- <laughs> I've never struggled with that. Day one, I've always been so good. Help, I need help. <laughs> um. I don't know. It's really tough to say. I When people ask me that, I said, the best thing for me to do is have conversations with people. One, it helps me connect with people, but then two, it helps me learn how to help the next person, mm. whether they use our services or not. Because people always have questions about what it is that we do, um, our story, or like, how do you feel so comfortable sharing your story? I'm like, because my story isn't for me. Um, and so for me, that's the biggest way is Could like, you make that a sound bite. Yeah. <laughs> My story isn't for me is not. And so just a quick example. So uh, we go to Woodstock city church mm-hmm. And me and one of my really good friends, Stephanie, um, we were leaders of, um, for the college ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they asked me to speak in front of like all these KSU students. And so, um, I don't know, it's like a couple hundred students. I am not a public speaker whatsoever. And so I was standing up there and, um, just talking to them and talking about, I don't even remember what I was talking about. And they said, how are you able to do it? And I said, I had to take me out of it. And I was like, it was almost like I was sitting in the audience watching myself and being someone that I needed to hear when I was in college. Mm. So I think doing that is, is really the biggest way to support. And and really one of the things that I need is my story isn't, it's not for me. Right. Like, I'm going through all of these things. It's not going to be identical to anybody else, Correct. but it's because like you said, God wants me to help that lady in the grocery store that we don't know what she's going we through. We have no idea. Exactly. So your story that, you know, your story isn't for you. It's for you to share. Wow. Um, yeah. That's going to be painful because <laughs> if my girls hear this, they'll be like, yeah, mom. Why are you telling your story? Because eh, it's my story. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's hard to be vulnerable because you don't hard. know who's going to hear on the other side of the microphone. Correct. Um, Especially in, in this format, because you don't have any control. I oh. mean, I struggle to say my story in smaller groups, yeah. but it aren't being recorded. So it's interesting that how much more. We, I get it. It's sometimes you take it in steps, like yeah. you share a little bit, share a little bit, but back to the control thing. Are we really in control anyway? We're not. <laughs> Just straight up, we are so. It's. I saw this um, message one time where someone said had all these beads in his hand, and he goes, "Yeah, these are like family and finances and health and everything else. I'm going to control it. I'm going to control it. I'm going to try and squeeze it, and all the beads come out." He goes, "What do you have control over?" Yeah. But if you have your hands like this, you can put in and out whatever you want. Right. So it's just a. It's very intriguing. So. It is. Okay, so I didn't get a clear, clear answer on how I can go out today and help Canon Studios, except for maybe, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, if I meet someone that I think has a story that's going to, well, I really think everyone has a story that can impact they do. others. I, I don't think I can, there, there's no way to rank that or judge that. Um, maybe somebody who just loves your laugh should come here. <laughs> That's my question. Can Kyle, because he's so freaking smart with technology, do you think he could make your laugh into like um, a tone on my phone, like an alarm? So you want to hear my laugh that much? Like it is so cool. Like when I'm listening to your podcast, I'm like, man, she's got such a great laugh. I was told by a camp director when I was really young that I had a shrill laugh that hurts people's ears. Oh, and. Like, so now I listen to people's laughs way more yeah. and I love your laugh. I think I have different laughs for different things. Mm. Um, I have my laughs for when like things aren't really that funny, but I have to laugh because the person that's telling the joke will be like, oh, she didn't think my joke was funny. So I have different laughs. This is my <laughs> podcast laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you laugh at a joke I tell, I'll be like. Is that a real laugh? Well, you won't know what laugh it is. That's <laughs> now I'm gonna have to do a laugh study. That's so annoying. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. Whatever. Um So yeah. So with So how can people support? One, listen to the podcast, okay. share it on social media, okay. share it with your friends, text it to five people and just let them listen and hear 
the podcast that that helps with our exposure. Okay. Um, second thing is if you know anyone that's interested and in, in, in they hit on like starting a podcast or they want to um, do content more consistently talking about video content mm-hmm. um, or they need, you know, they're going through a rebrand. A mm-hmm. lot of companies are going through that. Um, one thing that people don't think about is when you rebrand your logo, you need to rebrand your headshot. You need to rebrand your photography the entire way that you look, right? Even if that's for a huge company, we can help you with that. And so when so you're going from those- a nonprofit to an LLC, we we're supposed to rebrand. Um, w- tell me when you have time with the calendar because <laughs> we didn't do that. We actually took our headshots on our iPhone in front of our really cute front door. So Okay. Yeah, there you go. There's there you go. Yeah, and we need you. Okay. We definitely need you. So, I'm going to ask the question even for us because yeah. I am interested. If I was going to start a podcast to yeah. help people understand how to yeah. manage their career intentionally or their organization intentionally, what would I do? What like what would I have to be yeah. prepared for? I'm in this really cool room in this studio here and I don't even look at the camera because it has all kinds of stuff that looks like a (laughs) hospital on it and I don't know what to do with it. And so, yeah, backwards. So that also is a little disturbing for me. Yeah. Yeah, Um, So this is not my world. Yeah. So what would a small business owner want to have prepared to come and talk to you? It's a good question. The first thing that I always ask people is what is the end goal? Mm -hmm. And then I'll work back from there. So if your end goal is, um, I don't know, I just want to try it out. If that's their answer, we may not be a good fit. But if their answer is, hey, I want to provide value or I want to provide like this thought leadership or, hey, I want to connect with business. It just depends on what their answer is. Okay. Then we start digging more into the conversation. So coming prepared, you need to know who you want to speak to and what the goal is, right? Okay. The same couple I was talking with yesterday, they're wanting to start a podcast. I sat with them for like 30 minutes, maybe even longer, and said, okay, so what are your goals with this? They said, well, we eventually want to be on panels and speaking about relationships and marriage because we've had a very interesting ride. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, now that I know that's your goal, we can create you a bank of content that helps support this is what you're trying to do, Mm -hmm. right? So coming with knowing who you want to speak to, right? Um, And then knowing what your goal is with the podcast and how it plays a part in your overall strategy. um, Those are the two things you need. Okay. Um, And sometimes people don't have the whole strategy figured out and that's fine. But as long as you know who you want to speak to and what your end goal is. Then you help with that. And then basically someone comes in and just talks? No. Do you do an interview? Do you have structure? There is. Okay, so you have a whole package that they, yeah. they're they going to have a checklist and get some endorphins they are. checking things off. So our typical process works. We have a discovery call, mm-hmm. right? Um, sometimes I try to block out 30 minutes, but in all honesty, it usually goes a little bit over because you cannot cut somebody's story short. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have 20, 30 minute conversation after that. I've qual if I've qualified them, we move to the next step. Okay. This is, this is what it's going to look like. Um, this is how much it's going to cost. Um, and so here's, here's what your commitment looks like. If they can't commit, then we can't commit. So if we say, okay, we need you to come in this many hours per month or whatever, if they can't commit to that, it's going to be hard for us to say, okay, we can provide this. So discovery call proposal, after after you said, yeah, we agree, then we have what I call a kickoff call or a kickoff meeting. Mm-hmm. You'll come into the office. We'll have a one hour strategy session. You come with your target and your goals. Okay. Um, and then from there, we'll say this is how we need to structure it. So, um, you know, we'll figure out what your branding needs to be. Um, and if we need to pull in, um, I have a graphic designer that I work with. If we need to pull in branding, um, I don't let that stop people though, because if you don't have a logo, that's okay. Just take people on the journey to you getting one. Mm-hmm. But, um, I yeah. Logo, so I'm yeah. Yeah. You are. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> and I just want you to know I'm wearing black and white for the Canon Studios. Thank you. Yeah, logo, so you was, are. Yeah, it was all for Very you. Very intentional. Yeah, usually I wear bright colors on rainy days just because yeah, everyone it's else a rainy does day. it. Yeah. Okay. So I want to be different there. Okay. So if I'm a company and a small business is coming to you yeah. and I'm a service yeah. or I'm a product, yeah. is there a different approach to that? 
for doing podcasts? I think you still need to provide value regardless of what you're selling. Okay. Whether it's a physical product or a service. Okay. Um, so the intent behind it, what is the, the actual goal with it? Um, and then we help kind of fill in those pieces. So if you're, if you're selling a physical product or a service like you do, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and you don't have to know what you're going to say. We figure that out for you. Um, so by the time you go to record your first podcast or your first piece of content, we will have met so many times that you'll be comfortable and you'll understand what you need to say. And do you do it in an interview fashion or does someone just stand like just it chat just with the mic themselves? So we typically aren't in the podcast with our clients. Okay. Um, if we, if we need to, we can be off camera, but we want to highlight the client, not us. Okay. Um, and, and so, Yeah. We prepare them for that. And um, then you do the editing. Yeah, we Canon do the Studios editing. Does mm-hmm. all of the editing yep. and puts it out there. Yeah. That's awesome. I know that this is a very broad thing. Yeah. What's the smallest number someone could budget for? And yeah. I don't mean that in an obnoxious way. Yeah. Because I have the same thing, like yeah. as a service. You know, well, how much does it cost? Well, yeah. I have offerings that are low. Yeah. And then I have offerings that are large, depending on the time and yeah. everything else. What is like kind of a range that mm-hmm. you would say for small business? Yeah. So it starts at, we, we have it starting at $125 per episode and that mm-hmm. episode can be up to an hour. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Small businesses line up. <laughs> <laughs> and we have different packages from that, but, right. um, that's what it starts at for a podcast. That is really wonderful. Mm-hmm. What a gift to people. And it become, could become a training option for people like yeah. when they're onboarding yeah. new people that, hey, go listen to our last five podcasts to yeah. so get more of a feel for our culture and our yeah. values. It could be a completely yeah. remarkable tool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you could make it a part of your process. I think it should be a part of process. One of the coolest things that I've seen um, other companies do is um, they use a podcast only for their internal team. And that's their source of communi- like communicating things in conjunction with a newsletter. All right. That's brilliant mm-hmm. because you don't have to watch it, but mm-hmm. you can, you I can guess, if you're it. always recording it. Yeah. But you can listen to it, but it's a consistent message. Yeah. And it can go, you can go back to it at any point. You can kind yeah. of listen and take notes as you need to because some yeah. people have these amazing still tap trap brains yeah. and they remember everything. Well, you think about it too. It helps drive deeper connection because there may be some large companies with hundreds of employees. They don't know who their leadership is all the time or they don't get a chance to hear their voice. So if they have oh, a podcast, wonderful. you know what I'm saying? Like if they have, if you have a podcast, you're like, Oh, that's it. That's the CFO, right? Like I listen to them every week. So you don't feel like you're so disconnected from leadership, but you have this, and that podcast can be like 10 minutes a week, right? But Um, it could change so much and save so many questions. Yeah, Like it can, oh my goodness, that, (laughs) I I love that idea. So So I was asking questions about small business, but that could be large enterprises. Yeah. Truly international yeah. enterprises. And that helps with employee retention and just driving that connection more. Like you, you said, know. being intentional. Like, how would you feel if you worked for a huge company and every week you are getting an audio or even an audio and video podcast delivered, well, you, that you have access to from the, the top leadership in your company? Imagine if Walmart did that. Well, so I worked with a really large company when I was Mm -hmm. in my 20s, and something wouldn't have happened that did happen if I'd actually known that it was the president in the elevator (laughs) with me while I was um, basically having a tantrum about my boss and using his name Yeah, and getting off the elevator with my friend. And he looked at my friend, looked at me and goes, do you know who was in the elevator with us? I'm like, no idea. No Uh do I care. And he informed me that it was the president of our company with his bodyguard. Uh Uh-oh. So... Yeah, having a podcast would have been great. Or a video, because, I mean, back Something. then they didn't have those. Like, yeah. But, um, yeah, that would have been helpful. Yeah. I could, I could have learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. think I should write a book of what not to do. There you go. But I will say this. In all of my history, I have been ridiculously blessed about people being intentional, choosing to see me, and choosing to help me on my journey. And I can say that from every single company that I worked with. Awesome. Give me a second because I think that's Mike. 
Who's no. Mike Cena? Oh, I want to pretend I'm interviewing him. Okay. He's going to die. He's going to die laughing. Oh, I have another question. You got. You can hear me finish you my last question. No, you can no. stay here. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Doesn't he look like that guy from Miami Vice? Do you know who I'm talking about? I wish. <laughs> What's his name? Who? The dude with the sports coat all the time. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen Miami You know Vice. what I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking Tom about. Johnson? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I think that's who you look like you. You it's a compliment. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. I don't know his name, but that's who he makes me think of. Okay. Did you even see Miami Vice? Are you old enough to know Miami Vice? I know what it is. I'm 33. <laughs> I was born in 1989. You can just call me mom. How old's your mom? Uh, 58. Okay, we're good. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Take a picture? Yeah. Oh, how fun. <laughs> Okay, ask me my final question. I don't know what Do you have any be. more questions for me? Oh, I could ask you questions all day, so I'll be nice. Just ask me one more. One more. The biggest one. Mm. <laughs> How is it working with Kyle? <sighs> That's a good question. There's a balance because we're so opposite. So Kyle is, I'm like you said, I'm an ideas person. I'm like, hey, we could do this and this and this. And Kyle is a very technical. He's like, well, we can do this, but he's all about automation. So it's like, we can do this. We'll need to build this out and it's going to cost this, um, versus if we build this out and we have to hire another person. So working with him, I, I appreciate it. Now I didn't at first, I was like, you're getting on my nerves, but now I'm like, okay, because he always brings me back to, that's a really good idea but it's going to take a lot to actually implement that idea because he's so technical. So, um, I like it. Um, the hardest part is because we work together and we're always thinking about things, we don't know when to cut business off. Mm -hmm. So we're slowly like enforcing those boundaries when we're at home. Okay. It's dinner time. We cannot talk about what happened at the studio. Let's talk about Canon and his Legos. Mm -hmm. And it's tough. That's the, that's the toughest part. So other than that, I like him. He's all right. He's all right. I think he's very, very kind hearted. So there you go. <laughs> he's you said very kind. Very kind hearted. Yeah. Unless you cross him the wrong way because he is from Detroit. Mm. <laughs> I've been to Detroit. <laughs> so many stories. Um Yeah, but sometimes being kind is being um setting things straight. Yeah. And he Kind does is that. not mean wimpy. No, he's not wimpy. Nice can be wimpy. Kind cannot. Yeah. He's very kind and very, very mellow and yeah, the peacemaker. I'm not. So, okay. That's a good question. Thanks. <laughs> Since we're a family business too, you are. So, you know, yeah. Sometimes it changes dynamics and it does. it does overflow into everything else. So. Yeah, it does. But you know what? Um, before I decided to quit, we went to therapy together mm -hmm. and spoke with like a marriage therapist just to tell her like before we even decided to do it and she really helped us with some strategies to Great. like implement it's like we weren't going any like we were going through something in our marriage but not I guess in the way you would think it was more of like hey we're about to hit this really big transition what can we do so we don't kill each other? <laughs> See, to me, that's so wise. Like, it, it's literally intentionally removing obstacles yeah. up in front that are very likely, very, very likely to show up. Yeah. So. That's cool. Yeah. So that's, that's good us. advice for people. You know. I didn't do that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it just, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Last question. Last question for you. So you said that someone paid you not to sing. So we're going to go with Emmy. Okay. Imagine that you've just won an Emmy 
Award, what would you say in your thank you speech? What's an Emmy? Okay. Imagine you just <laughs> won a Grammy Award. You know what a Grammy is? That's music because oh, yes. on my phone, right? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Or I, I can go to Oscar. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Okay, go ahead. Okay. We'll just um, pretend it's an award that I know what it means. Okay. What would I say in my thank you? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, first, obviously, first, thanks to Yahweh for breath. Yes. Yeah. I don't have anything else. Um, and then truly, I would probably take up the next four weeks thanking every single person <laughs> by name that has helped me on my journey <laughs> and telling stories about how wonderful they are. Okay. I know that seems really simple, but I just say it. I could not. Well, don't take four weeks. Okay. I could not. Thank you for the people who saw my potential before I saw my potential. Thank you for the people who knew I would probably fall flat on my face, but they let me try it anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the people. I mean, from Randy Spratt to Adriana, like so many people, so many people, literally the names and the faces are just flying through my head right now. Yeah. Of how many people chose to care. That's what I would have to say thank you for. And then I would encourage every single person to look around and see who you can help. Hmm. You have no idea what the end result will be. They could be up here getting an award. They don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm winning a Grammy. What's that for you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have, um, yeah, I have some okay. issues. <laughs> it's all right. That was good. Thank you. That's a common theme I've found when I ask people that question. It They never start with talking about themselves and what they've accomplished. Every single person I've asked that question to, they always say, I want to thank the people that, like you said, saw something. In, and it's just mind blowing to I don't know, because you see it on TV or whatever, right. but to hear like that common theme, that's just very interesting to me. Because I think people who do accomplish things know they didn't do it by themselves. Yeah. It's people who don't accomplish things that are still trying to do everything by themselves. Mm. Can you look in that camera and say that? No. Probably <laughs> Y'all, things just come out of this mouth that have no... Yeah, sometimes I'm like, wow, that sounded really good. Did anyone write that down? Um and it's just because of all the years of people pouring in. But I really do believe that m- there is no one that accomplishes anything by themselves. And I believe the people who think they can are the ones not accomplishing anything. And that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been fun. We've talked for a very long time. Have we? I don't even know what time. Is it rude to look at my watch? No. Okay. I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> it's, oh my word. <laughs> you I know. <laughs> Thankfully, Mike came to save Johnny yeah. from Elizabeth. <laughs> Appreciate that. This might have to be two episodes. Whatever it needs to be. Now, yeah. I love talking to you, and I just can't wait to see well, good. all the things that are going to happen through you guys. Yeah. I love talking to you, too. This makes me want to be a better person. So, <gasps> Success. Yes. I get a check mark. <laughs> On my list, it says, make Gianna want to be a better person. It doesn't, but, you know. Yes. Well, once again, thank you so much for listening to the Canon Studios podcast. Today has been incredible. If you missed anything, feel free to go back and listen again. Um, And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, share this with five friends, whether you share it on social media or share it in a text, however you want to share it, you do that. We would appreciate it. Um, And until next time, this is Gianni with the Canon Studios podcast.